Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today will be part two of our five-part blind taste test rankings video series featuring Cafe Box's 2021 advent calendar. So a reminder on the way that this series works is we have six cups of coffee over here, and we have six containers of coffee over here. We're trying to identify which of these cups is which of these containers based off of taste alone. And the winner from each one of these blind taste test videos will go into a final video, and we will determine which of these coffees is our favorite from the entire advent calendar. So let's go ahead and introduce today's coffee, starting with day seven, which is the Vista Hermosa, Wash Process Guatemala from Coffee Collective, based out of Copenhagen, Denmark. And the last coffee they included was a very savory Wash Process Kenyan, and we like Wash Process Guatemalans a lot more than Wash Process Kenyans. Very interesting to see how this coffee finishes. Day eight, the Hambella Wamina, anaerobic processed Ethiopia from Jakku out of Al Shund, Norway. And they didn't include an anaerobic in last year's advent calendar, and I remember that coffee very well. It was a very funky, wild, and out there cup of coffee. But they do have the first place finisher from our last blind taste test, so definitely going to be interesting to see how this one places. Day nine, we have the Dilge Chelbesa, organic wash processed Ethiopia from Kopi Coffee out of Helsingborg, Sweden. And uh, Kopi is the one that tripped us up in the last video as they do tend to be very delicate, tame cups of coffee as a whole. So with a lot of wash processed coffees, that one was even a little savory too, which made it more tricky since we had some Kenyans on the table. Yeah, it should be a lot easier this time with fewer wash processed coffees. Day nine, correction, day 10, the Los Pirineos anaerobic semi-carbonic processed El Salvador from La Cabra Coffee based out of Orhus, Denmark. No anaerobic, just semi-carbonic, but yeah, don't really know what to expect from this one. This one's a wild card on the table for sure as a unique processing method, Central American coffee. No, no clue what to expect on that one. Day 11, the Emmanuel Solis, natural processed Costa Rica from Schlungi Coffee Rosary out of Schlungi, Sweden. And again, apologize for my terrible Scandinavian pronunciation, but this one right here is a lot more our sort of cup of coffee as opposed to the anaerobic from the last video. So in theory, this one should place a lot higher and this one's probably the highest end coffee on the table as it is a Gesha. So we'll see how that one finishes. And then day 12, the Yarrow. Erila, natural processed Columbia from Langora Cafe, based out of Stjordal, Norway. And interestingly about uh, Langora, not only did we do a full bag review of them recently that we really enjoyed, their coffee in the last video placed pretty high, and looking back on it last year, I was seeing where I kind of ranked those coffees, and I really liked the Langora coffees. So I really like Langora Cafe as a whole, so there's a strong chance it could place pretty well in this video as well. Well, let's go ahead and move these coffees out of the way for now so we can start tasting some coffees. And as always, none of these coffees are labeled anywhere except for on the bottom. We just like to shuffle them around for good measure and kind of discuss what to expect from this video. Honestly, don't know what to expect. So we have a couple of naturals and a anaerobic as well as two wash processed coffees, quite a few Central Americans in this as well. The only coffee that might be kind of easy is the wash processed Ethiopia as it probably will stand out just because of how different it is from the other cups of coffee. But really any of these coffees could finish anywhere between first place and last place. So it's just basically, it's mystery. All right, we will start with that cup over there. Cup number one. Interesting cup of coffee right off the start. Got a slight bit of this, uh, I'll describe it as a cookie sweetness. A little citric, pretty nice. I'm quite enjoying this cup of coffee. Off to a positive start, I like that coffee. Cup number two. <laughs> this one is, um, oof, that's out there. It's also citric, but it's also very herbal and vegetal as a whole. That one's really standing out there. It's a very unique cup of coffee. I'm happy with the ranking so far. I have no idea what that one's going to be, but let's go ahead and try cup number three. Okay, this one right here is definitely one of the natural or anaerobic processed coffees. Uh, very strong, boozy, fermenty sort of components to it. To describe as that uh, cherry cordial, plenty of wine to it. I don't necessarily like those cups of coffee. That's why they finished last in the last video. And that's why as of right now, it's my least favorite, but let's keep going. Cup number four. Okay. Slightly floral, pretty citric, um, pretty out there too. I'm not sure where I want to place this one, but I think I'm going to put it in second place for right now. Interesting cup of coffee. 
I like this one the most so far, by far. All right, cup number five. Hmm. Okay, this one's pretty nice actually. Uh, definitely gonna be one of the wash process coffees. Maybe it could be that uh, Gesha, but I think I am comfortable saying that that's probably one of the wash process coffees. Pretty nice start so far with that one. Don't necessarily know which one any of these four are, but uh, that's the way I'm gonna place them for right now. Of course, we'll run through them a little bit later. And final cup. Okay, this is the other anaerobic or natural processed coffee. And I think I'm gonna try to distinguish which one's which real quick. Okay. So I think that since this one's a little bit more strong and powerful, then I'm gonna guess that it is the uh, Langora coffee because in my experience this year, the natural processed Colombians have been much stronger than even the anaerobics. The natural processed Colombians have been very, very dominant. So they're both pretty similar in the sense that uh, whiny, boozy, very kind of fermenty sort of cups of coffee. And as a result, I'm gonna guess that that's the Jakku, which I believe is number eight. And as, as mentioned, they just take away from what I really enjoy about a cup of coffee. There are some people that really love that flavor profile, just not necessarily my preference. So I'm gonna place those two right there for right now. And let's run through these one more time real quick. Yeah, that could be a number of things. I d it definitely feels like it's gonna be one of those Central American cups of coffee. A little out there. So it's, it's I can't, express how like weirdly vegetal that one is. As this one's cooled down, this one's definitely improved. This one's actually kind of nice. Um, I'm gonna move this one up. I'm not entirely sure where to move it up to yet. This one's got a slight, slight fermentiness to it. That's why I think it could in theory be the natural. So I'm moving this one up from that and we will try the final cup right here. All right. I think I'm willing to start taking some guesses here. Uh, I'm moving this one all the way up to the top, even though this one initially left a pretty positive impression on me. We have citric cups of coffee over here and this one right here is pretty uh, delicate as a whole. I have a feeling that this one's probably the Kopi coffee. Yeah, this one's probably the one washed Ethiopia if it is, and it's a Kopi coffee. That is my favorite Kopi coffee I've ever had. And it is uh, a standout on this one. So let's go ahead and take a guess on that. It's the Kopi coffee. Which one did I say was the slightly like fermenty, slight bit of natural? It was this one. I'm gonna guess that that right there is the Shlongi coffee, which is uh, number 11. And then I'm gonna guess that now we have the Coffee Collective and the La Cabra. So of course the uh, Central American Danish coffee roasters. I'm gonna guess 10, that's La Cabra. And I'm gonna guess that that right there is the Coffee Collective coffee. All right, mildly confident. Let's see how we did. Uh, this one I said right here was the Langora coffee. So it should say number 12 and it does. And kind of went through my train of thought on that initially as the natural process Colombians have been really strong and that's my only reason for guessing that. Uh, this one as a result should be number eight. Let's take a look. Yeah, as soon as I knew that that one was 12, I knew that this one was eight. Uh, these are not necessarily my flavor profile sort of coffees and that's why they finished the way they did. They did in the last video and they did in this one. So not really surprising, um, pretty easy ones to pick out. This is where things are gonna get tricky. So this one right here, I had no idea. I don't have a great reason for guessing it. I mentioned that these are all three pretty citric cups of coffee. This one's a little out there and with the unique processing method, it might be a little out there. Let's see how we did, should say number 10. And it is, all right, perfect. So the La Cabra coffee. And I really didn't know what to expect from that coffee. And given just how out there, it was by far the most out there and wild cup of coffee on this table. So that's why I finished the way it did, not too surprising. Here's where things are gonna get a little bit more interesting. So strong chance of finishing 100%. Let's see how we did. This one I said was the Shlungi coffee because it had a very slight fermenty taste to it. And it is, I have to flip that around. Number 11, the Shlungi coffee. And 
it was just that ever so slight bit of fermentiness that gave it away. But as you can see, it's a lot cleaner than the other ones. That's why I placed it a little higher. So this one, it's solid. So let's keep going. And this one right here I said was the coffee collective coffee. So it should say seven and it is. All right, perfect, 100%. Coffee Collective Coffee. And I mentioned a slight cookie sweetness. It's it's really nice. It's a very light cup of coffee as a whole. Coffee Collective is one of the, even for Nordic roasters, they're pretty light. But as a result, our winner is the Kopi Coffee. So this one should say nine, and it does. All right, and that's very interesting because I've had a lot of thoughts on Kopi's coffees as a whole. And I think placing them in a blind taste test with a lot of really strong profiled cups of coffee with some really intense cups of coffee did the coffee justice. It really shone through as the best cup of coffee on this table. Nice standout. I'm happy that this one's moving forward. Funny, of course, we have the wash processed coffees that are moving to the final video as of this point. So it'll be interesting to see how the next couple of videos do as well as I know that there's the Ruby Batian from a coffee collective coming up and that's a pretty impressive cup of coffee but yeah those are the rankings 100 this time around redeemed myself for the last video so i would love to know your thoughts and impressions of these coffees if you've tried all six of these which ones was your favorite which ones were your least favorite uh if you're enjoying the content give this video a like i mention all the time these videos take a lot of time to make they are very difficult but they are by far the most fun to do so just give this video a like if you're new to the channel subscribe if you're not already subscribed but this right here has been part two of our blind taste test rankings video series featuring cafe box's 2021 advent calendar thanks everybody for watching